how do cat adjusters stay busy for three plus months during major hurricane events? Do claimants need to wait three plus months for their home to be inspected? Uh, I remember listening to a podcast of yours where you mentioned guys were busy for years on major events. What type of work are they doing during this time? So basically the, the kind of the heart of this question is if there's a major storm event that does catastrophic damage, um, those files are going to be, or those claims are going to be filed pretty much immediately. The states have um, requirements for the insurance companies to contact and scope and all this kind of stuff. These houses within days, right? With hour, within hours and days, you know, and, and then maintain contact with them once a week or once every 14 days or whatever it is, right? So how can it be that somebody could be on a storm for uh, three months, right? Well, a couple different ways. Um, I think that with hurricanes, um, most of the time, it's not just new claims that you're doing. If you if you're going to be on a storm for three or more, two or more months, really, um, then you're going to be getting reassigned claims from other adjusters that failed, right? They couldn't hack it, or had to leave the storm for whatever reason. Maybe something you know. They could hack it, but they had, you know, they had a family emergency. They had to go home and 70 files got sent. They, they had to get those reassigned and you got 20 of those, right? You call the homeowner up and say, hey, listen, I, I'm looking at the notes here. My name's Matt. And you had an appointment with Jeff. Jeff actually had to, um, had a family emergency. He had to go home. Um, I can't, I'm not going to be able to make that appointment because I've already got appointments set for this week, uh, but I'm going to reschedule you for whatever, right? So then you're having to do a little bit of that kind of thing, right? You're getting reassignments all the time, right? And this is, it kind of works out to where like the the, va the vast bulk of claims get um, assigned, they, they get filed and assigned almost immediately within the first week. And then they start like, the number of adjusters starts doing this as the weeks pass. There is only one company that provides E&O and general liability insurance solely to the insurance industry, and that's Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance that you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And those claims kind of stack onto the adjusters that are left. Um, also, reinspections um, are going to happen on your work as well as other adjusters that have already left the event, right? So it may be you're not getting so many more new files anymore. Um, you're getting reinspections for public adjusters there, or the roofer doesn't agree that the roof is, we're just repairing the roof. It starts to get kind of sticky, and this is when it gets. <laughs> You can call it the fun part of adjusting, um, but it's kind of the, if you, if you don't have a lot of experience, it could be intimidating because you run into a, the, the variety of situations that happen starts to increase, right? So you get a lot more kind of cranky people. So you really got to have like some top shelf customer service skills and kind of a, some thick skin, right? Especially at that point in the storm. So that's one of the reasons why adjusters are going to be still on storms months after the event happened. And a lot of times, smaller events will happen in that area that they don't need to call new people and they just assign those to the, the adjusters that are already there. So you can get work from other storms while you're deployed to hurricane whatever, right? Um, the other thing is, um, and that's for hur like hurricanes and stuff like that. Um, same would go for uh, earthquake. I know, I've never worked earthquake before, but I know people that worked like back in the mid nineties, the Northridge quake, um, where they were, they bought houses in the Valley and, you know, in the San Fernando Valley to, instead of paying for hotels, they just bought a house down there, um, cause they were that busy. Those claims were dragging out. They had a lot of engineers on them. There were a lot of reinspections, a lot of reassignments all that kind of stuff. So those those can go for, go on for a long time. And then the contractor gets involved and they start working on something. Maybe it took them, you know, eight months to finally get a contractor to show up at the house and he starts working on it for, he's been there for a few weeks and he discovers a bunch of like, like shredded up framing and inside of what nobody could see it, right? So th this is 
Um, this is why you can adjusters can be on those kinds of storm for a long time. Um, the other way is with hail. So hail being kind of the bread and butter of a catastrophe adjuster, really whether you're field or remote, and that is is that the hailstorm hits and where the hail was this big, pe most people are filing, filing a claim right away. Happened in the middle of the night. It sounded like, you know, cannonballs were landing on the roof. Um, and it's loud. I mean, it's super duper loud. It will absolutely wake you up. S super strong storms with high winds and rain and all this kind of stuff. And you get this pounding on the roof and then windows are breaking. And those people are filing claims right away. But the, the, that's a core of where the hail fell. And it's not very... It could be seven miles long and a half mile wide, just a strip where all that really super heavy hail fell. And then out from there, concentric rings out from outside of that, it gets the hail gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? The farther out you go, um, there still could be a lot of damage, but people are less aware of it. So that's when you have neighborhoods where, you know, three months into a hailstorm, um, you're talking to the homeowner in their front yard, you know, you just pulled up and introduced, introduced yourself and they're like, well, you know, we weren't going to call, but, uh, we, you know, our neighbor over there, like two, you know, three houses down is they just had their roof replaced. And I went over there in the other morning and asked him what he was doing. He's like, oh yeah, we had a hailstorm, And so we filed a claim. So that's, what's why we filed the claim. Right. So it's much more diffuse in that way where the claims trickle in versus being all like in one huge chunk, like a fire blows through. Right. And that's. If you know your house burned down, we're not going to be like three months from now going, well, I don't know. Why isn't there a house here? Um, so that's really the answer to that question, Dylan. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HagueEducation.com. Uh, Brad. Got a question here about licensing. Um, would like to go ahead and get his license. What's the best state to get a license? Easiest to, to obtain? Um, I don't know if there's like an easiest one, but I would say that Florida is probably if you don't if you live in a state a non licensing state, um, then Florida is probably the number one pick. But it's kind of like. You know, there's there's kind of the top three, I think, are Florida, Texas, and maybe Indiana. Um, Florida and Texas are absolutely critical licenses to get. Um, you can make your designated home state license any state. Like you could make it New York if you wanted to, um, but it's not really reciprocal with anybody else. So it's you have to still then take the test for those others those other licenses. Um, Texas is a big one. Florida is a big one. I would say. Just because of the fact that Florida um, is, I would. I, it's long story short, I, I would probably, if I had to, to do a coin toss, I would, or if I had to pick, if you held the gun to my head and I had to pick, I'd, I'd probably go with Florida on that. Leah, could you talk about how one goes about working as a team? Yes, absolutely. So. Here's how I would say to go about working as a team. I know that there's a lot of husbands and wives out there that want to do this together. And I strongly, strongly encourage that. Um, but there's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, there's a few ways to do it. Um, if you're working as a team, what you're, what you're wanting to do is help each other, right? So, and one of you, there's a couple of, there's just, here's how there's two ways to do this. And the first way, one of you is going to be the lead on the claims. So you're going to be the one with, you both have to get licensed and you both have to get um, certified with the, with the carrier, right? So you both have to go to State Farm certification or AMFAM certifications or whoever, right? No matter what, especially if one of you is going to be making phone calls. Um, but one of you will be the face of the claim or the face of the, yeah, I guess you could say the face of the claim. So that's going to be the person that is showing up at the insurance house, big phone calls, like settlement phone calls, um, or if they got questions, this is going to be the person that's going to talk to the homeowner about that stuff um, and do the inspection and probably write the estimate. Um, but again, like I said, there's a, bu a bunch of different ways to do this. I, the, the, I had an assistant um, 
which, you know, you technically could be me working as a team, teaming up with somebody else, but it was basically me figuring out what part of my workflow um, was dragging me down, like stuff that, that I'm trying to be out there inspecting losses and writing them up, right? <clears throat> but I have to do other things concurrently with that in order to maintain a high level of customer service and not get kicked off the storm, right? So if I, if I people are calling me and I'm not calling them back or I'm taking a super long time to call them back because I'm so busy scoping and writing, um, that's going to be a problem, right? So what I did was, is I, I outsourced my um, scheduling uh, and my voicemail, which was two massive things, right? If um, my scheduling person, I had them set up to where they call the homeowner, they had a series of questions that they asked and they checked those things off and they wrote them on a piece of paper. They, they put them in an email, all the stuff in an email and sent it to me. Um, and it, but I built my own schedule um, and then I just gave that to this, this scheduling person and they just made calls and said, hey, Matt wants to come look at your house at nine o'clock on Tuesday. Um, then that allowed me to get out in the field immediately and then they, they were checking my voicemail period, periodically through the day and calling people back and saying, hey, you left a message for Matt. Um, you know, try, they try to answer the question if it's something that they can answer. Otherwise, it may be that the person really wants to talk to me. And so then I get a text message or uh, a call or an email saying, hey, you need to call these people back. Um, so-and-so called at this time, so-and-so called at that time, so-and-so called at that time, and they have questions that I can't answer, right? So that's, that's how I did it. Worked really well. Um, some teams will do, um, especially husband and wife teams, uh, Mrs. Adjuster goes and loves to climb roofs and do all that kind of crazy stuff. And so she is doing the scoping and then Mr. Adjuster's in the truck on the laptop and he's writing it up and they got radios and whatever. Um, the, the way that I saw that it looked to me to be the most lucrative for a, like a husband and wife team in particular who live together and you share expenses, right? And you share income was a couple that I knew um, back in the day that they were both adjusters and they both, they, they, the I firm and everybody knew that they were together so that they didn't send him to St. Louis and her to Minneapolis. They went to Minneapolis together. They went to St. Louis together and they worked they both had their own vehicles, stayed in a hotel, and she went out and did three or four a day, and he went out and did seven or eight. And then they had an assistant that did their desk work, um, and those guys raked it in. I don't, I don't think that, you know, if you're talking about like a team where you and another adjuster get together and are just going to split stuff, you're not going to make double. It's not going to happen. You, there's no way to do to do double the work, um, unless you're only doing three a day, and then you probably can do six a day. But you're not going to do twelve a day or fifteen a day, right? If you're if you're doing normally six or seven or eight. Um, so that's you know the the last thing I'll say on teams is that I, I strongly recommend that whoever is the adjuster adjuster right the face of the claim like we were talking about, um, needs to do everything first themselves um, so that they know they know all the steps so that they can pick up the slack in case the team member, you know, something happens where they got to go home or there's an emergency or whatever, and so that they can train the other, their assistant or their other team member on how they like it done. This is the way, most efficient way I've found how to do it. If you can improve on this, great. But this is how I like it done. So I have an expectation of what's going to happen when I hand stuff off to you, right? Um, this goes in particular with writing estimates. Um, we both need to be on the, the same page about how all that stuff gets put together. Um, but yeah, I do encourage it. At the, and, and the I firms, um, they may not officially say it, or maybe they will, but they love husband and wife teams. Uh, a lot because they, they can be a lot more efficient 
And those, fa- those phone calls do not fall through the cracks like it will with a run and gun guy who's just by himself. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Xactware Training, the creators of Xactimate X1 and Xactimate Mobile. Xactimate is the most advanced and widely used estimating platform in the insurance and restoration industries. Get certified right now as an Xactimate expert at the link in the description below. In the meantime, check out this video right here on Adjuster TV. Or is it here? I think it's here. Pretty sure it's here. Could be here. It's one of those places.